Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is HD StarCraft and I'm here for another Heart of the Swarm broadcast. And today I'm going to be doing a best of five from DreamHack Summer. And this is the grand finals for that event. Uh, this is going to be playing for $9,000 and $5,000 respectively. First place and second place in the tournament. And I'm very excited to be able to bring to you guys the players. The Zerg player in the top right hand corner of the map is the Red Zerg by the name of EG Jadong. And uh, his opponent is going to be MYI Stardust. He's the blue Protoss in the bottom left hand corner of the map. Once again, this is a best of five and it is the grand finals for DreamHack Summer. Um, and as you guys all know, I'm not casting the games from this tournament in any particular order. I'm just casting whatever games I feel like I, I want to cast. And so uh, whatever whatever ones um, are highlights or the best of the best. And so this is the grand finals. It is a best of five. And I hope you guys are excited for this. It's going to be a Zerg versus Protoss. And of course, as you guys all know, I'm a huge Jadong fan. Um, and, uh, you know, if I ever got it, I actually had a chance to sit down and um, eat with Jadong one time. That was like my highlight of my career ever. Uh, but yeah, I'm a huge Jadong fan. So I am going to be personally rooting for him just a little bit deep down inside. But Stardust is a uh, interesting player because he's kind of come up out of nowhere. Uh, he's not really a player that has any tournament winnings under his belt as of right now, as of uh, this tournament. And he is, uh, you know, he's a he's a guy that kind of just popped up out of nowhere, uh, picked up by Team My Insanity, and he has been just rampaging through the tournament and uh, made it all the way down here to the grand finals. Now I will say one thing. Uh, I casted a set of games that Stardust played against Hyun, uh, Quantic Hyun, if you guys didn't see those games, and that was also a uh, Protoss versus Zerg, and you know, uh, Stardust really didn't play those games straight up. Uh, he played a very aggressive Protoss versus Zerg style, and I have to say, if there's going to be a way to stop Jadong, um, I don't know if it's going to be uh, trying to take it into the macro game. It might have to force... Um, uh, our Protoss player Stardust into playing a more aggressive style and it, you know honestly from the games that I've casted of him playing against Hyun already it seems like he doesn't shy away from that um, just to refresh your guys memory when he played against Hyun uh, he went for um, uh, a bunch of nine gates <laughs> a bunch of nine gates he, he actually did the nine gate attack twice it was a three base delayed kind of nine gate awkward timing and in the second game he also went for a two base I think it was like a five or six gate all in so uh he is definitely one of those players one of those protoss players that loves gateway aggression uh very similar to i guess you could say huck or tt1 from the north american side um outside of korea so this is going to be interesting to see how jadong deals with this um although for now it looks like stardust is going to be going for a front door uh, surprise, surprise, he is going to be going for a wall, but that doesn't necessarily eliminate the possibility of him going for something crazy because, uh, as you guys recall, uh, Stardust did it on three bases, um, just an awkward timing with a bunch of gateways, so uh, this is going to be very cool to see, uh, you know, Stardust versus Jadong, and will Jadong finally get that first place win in DreamHack? He came so close in Stockholm last uh, the last event very very close I think he came all the way to um, the grand finals and he lost to Naniwa so uh, this is going to be his second shot and um, hopefully he doesn't get silver again if you guys are a Jadong fan so we'll see what happens here it looks like one zealot coming out from Stardust he is going to be of course poking out trying to find out what's going on a lot of bushes here on this map uh, whirlwind and uh, it's a pretty big map as well plus the fact that we have cross spawn uh, really does kind of lend itself into um, a macro game, but you know, Jadong is gonna have to keep his eyes peeled out for Stardust and his uh, blatant aggression. And so far, right now, do we have anything crazy going on? Uh, it is a little bit hard to read sometimes on the using the DreamHack overlay. I'm of course used to watching it like this, um, but. Yes, it doesn't look too crazy so far from Stardust. It looks like he is going to be adding on a robotics facility just now. Um, interesting that he doesn't have more gateways. It's, he's gone straight for Robo Bay here. Um, and usually Protoss players will have, you know, three gateways down and then they'll add on the Robo. Uh, so it's a little interesting that he's gone for such a quick robotics facility here. 
Um, and I'm not too sure what the reasoning behind that is. I mean, his front door is very vulnerable to a Zerg attack. Um, and it's just lucky for him that Jadong didn't decide to go for a Zerg based all in because this front door is not very well protected at all. There's only one sentry and one uh, stalker and a photon cannon um, and a roach all in would just end the game. So unfortunately for Jadong, not able to sniff that out, although he is going to be able to kill off this zealot at his front door. Warp gate technology is being researched at the gateway. And typically, if you are going to do some type of gateway all in, ah, there we go. It, um, it's not necessarily a gateway all in, but I was going to say it, typically, if you are going to do a gateway all in, you want to throw down all your gateways about the time the warp gate technology is halfway done researching so that they are ready to go once warp gate is finished now i was gonna say oh there comes all the gateways but i also saw a twilight council being added in and the overlord from jadong is going to float right on in here and is going to see all these gateways one two three four four gateways plus twilight council some type of building was canceled off at the front door here i'm not entirely sure what it was but jadong didn't didn't see it anyways so it doesn't really matter jadong does see the twilight council back here though so there are total of four gateways plus twilight council another forge being dropped in as well and this overlord is going to die but not before jadong gets a critical scout and in fact if jadong wants to he could certainly run into the natural expansion to find out what else is going on over there um, but it doesn't look like he's going to chance it in fact he is going to get out of there and Stardust is going for another expansion. So Stardust is going up to three bases right now. Uh, and if you look at the economy, 60 drones to 47 probes. Uh, it's actually a pretty, uh, it, it looks like we're going to be seeing a macro game here from both these players. Um, just based on the fact that Stardust is going for a third base. Um, and let's see, let's just keep an eye on how many more gateways he throws down. He is adding on three more gateways here, guys. That's going to add his total up to seven gateways. And he's going for, remember one other thing that Stardust did really well is he pumped out his upgrades. He typically has about 2-1 by the time he makes his attack and a Zerg player only has maybe one upgrade in total. Uh, so we can see Stardust here is ramping up those upgrades. He's going for plus two, plus one. He does have additional gateways coming down as well. If Jadong is not prepared for this attack, then he is going to uh, he is going to be in a lot of trouble. He could just straight up lose this game like Quantic Hyun did um, in a prior uh, pr prior match in this tournament. So Jadong hopefully has things ready to go, has things prepared. Here comes Stardust pushing out with a sizable army. One Changeling getting pooped out from the Overseer right there. That Changeling could be immensely valuable if it can make its way into the Protoss base. Meanwhile, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gateways in total. We don't have the eighth or the ninth gateway, ninth gateway so Stardust isn't necessarily um, really uh, focusing everything in, into this attack, but nevertheless, he is going for a seven gateway attack on three bases. This is still something that Zerg have to be uh, very wary about, although it's not nearly as, as threatening as uh, dealing with, you know, nine gateways worth of production. Uh, you still have to have your forces ready to go, and it looks like we do have some swarm here, but there's an over observer overhead, and and uh, that is going to allow Stardust to sniff out these swarm hosts, and he's going to be able to take them apart. Uh, meanwhile, Roaches and Zerbin is coming to take out the pylon. If Jadon can take out this pylon, that is absolutely huge. But he's got to take out the Zealots first, and now the Protoss forces from Stardust coming back to reinforce this pylon. This is, in fact, the only forward pylon that Stardust has. He has no other pylon nearby, and he just lost his probe right there. So he will not have the ability to uh, bring out another pylon. This is his only reinforcement point. And he's got a very large army. Will Jadong be able to deal with this? His upgrades are at plus one. Jadong's are, while the Protoss are at 2-1. So Stardust once again having that upgrade advantage. It's just a beautifully timed build from Stardust, which was able to take out Hyun, you know, so many times. Will Jadong fall to this build as well? It looks like he brings his roaches around. He is going to be able to take out that pylon, which is so big. And I love how he set, kept some of his roaches on the, uh, on the attack of the Zealots as well. But it looks like he loses his hatchery. The hatchery does go down. The Drones are trying to make it out of harm's way. Meanwhile, more roaches coming in. Will they be able to pick off that immortal? The immortal goes down to one last acid shot from the roaches, but there is still another immortal there. And another immortal coming in as well for, to make it a total of two. And Stardust is ripping through Jadong. He's only got, uh, well, he does have another base over here on the right-hand side, but he has lost his hatchery. 
And if we just look at some of these tabs here, you can see it is not a pretty picture for the Zerg player. Now a Warp Prism coming in from Stardust as well. Uh, in terms of what's inside, we have an Immortal and two Sentries. Jadong now saying, all right, well, you've taken out my hatchery. Let me try to return the favor here. And he's bringing in Zerglings in. He will be able to... I don't know if he's going to be able to take out these Zealots. Honestly, they are 2-1 upgraded, so they have a superior... Just a, a bunch of superior upgrades compared to these Zerglings. And you can see how those four Zealots almost taking out about half or even more of the Zerglings that were sent in there and yeah these Zerglings are just not going to be very cost effective against these heavily upgraded Zealots as an the Warp Prism still is flying around the place trying to find a, a proper place to drop off the cargo and continue to harass Jadong. Jadong does get his Zerglings into the main base. We do have a Dark Shrine coming up. Now the Dark Shrine was actually something that Stardust was trying to go for towards the end of game one against Hyun after this very similar, you know, he went for a 9 gate on 3 base and then he transitioned into Dark Shrine. We never actually got to see DTs coming out because um, uh, Hyun ended up GGing, uh, but Jadong did sniff this Dark Shrine out. He sent his Zerglings in and he saw it. So he should be well prepared for any DTs, but right now he's got a lot of things he's trying to juggle uh, on his plate. He's got to get his hatchery back. He's got to get rid of this Warp Prism. And, uh, you know, things are not looking too good for him. Now he has made a lot of Swarm Hosts. Um, and, you know, Stormhost is not a bad option at all uh, when you're in this kind of defensive bind. You really need units that can just come out for free. And it looks like he is going to try to take out these uh, this Immortal and their two sentries. But once again, just doesn't have any way to attack the Warp Prism. Uh, and the Queens were, in fact, kind of barricaded in by the Force Field. Uh, so this Warp Prism will continue to harass. Meanwhile, Jadong um, has to worry about another attack over here on the right-hand side where his new third expansion is located. And there's actually an Immortal just chilling at this hatchery that is birthing in as well. Meanwhile, oh, look at this. Stardust brings in Dark Templar. And the DTs are just going to silently assassinate this hatchery. No detection nearby. And Jadong was not prepared for that, even though he saw the Dark Shrine. I mean, that was just a little ambush counterattack. And Stardust now coming in through the bottom side as well. Jadong getting worked. And I don't think Jadong is going to win this game. I think the first game, ladies and gentlemen, is going to go to MYI Stardust with just an impeccable, you know, Protoss versus Zerg uh, strategy. And it's just very aggressive. Uh, works out pretty well for him. Jadong now trying to save this hatchery, but it's too late. The hatchery is going to fall. And now Jadong is in so much trouble. He's still got to deal with this Warp Prism in his main base. He's trying to desperately get the hatcheries back up. If you guys are wondering why he hasn't really GG'd out of the game yet, he does actually have a supply advantage. 155 supply to 111. Don't ask me how he has a supply advantage. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. But uh, Stardust is on three bases, and for some reason Stardust is only at 116 supply. But he has killed off almost every hatchery that Jadong has. So Jadong is still in a very much a bad spot here. And there's still this Warp Prism continuing to bring in reinforcements. The main hatchery could once again go down if Jadong does not bring in units. But it looks like he's just going to say, forget it. I'm going to go for an all-out counterattack. I don't even want to try to save my, my main anymore. I'm just going to try to end the game by straight countering you. And the thing here is Stardust doesn't really have that much units back at home. Um, while he does have, you know, 1,100, 1,200 minerals and, you know, about a little bit of gas, he actually doesn't have that much forces. All of his forces are on the other side of the map, and this is one of the, the downfalls when you're Protoss and you go for this highly aggressive gateway strategy. Uh, you rob yourself of going for Colossus. You rob yourself of going for Archons and Templar, and that's the units you need right now to deal with this type of army. And Jadon just says, well, if you're going to all in me and you're going to do this crazy aggro strategy, I know you don't have that much technology, and I am going to just straight up attack you with my forces and could Jadong actually pull this comeback I mean this would be so sick he is actually now only at 83 81 supply though so his supply advantage has diminished quite radically and the reason for that is because he lost all of his drones he didn't bother saving them so at the end of the day both armies are about the same size if you count for the 50 drones uh, you know 140 minus 82 ish 
Uh, so Jadong still has a sizable army here, but it looks like, I don't know what he's doing right now. It looks like he's brought some of it back to try to save his last hatchery because he knows if he loses this hatchery, he'll lose the game. He cannot lose his buildings here, but he needs an overseer and he cannot w morph this overlord into an overseer because he doesn't have a layer. So he's got to bring his overseers back home. He takes out the uh, Dark Templar and now he's uh, still trying to attack forward with these swarm hosts, doing a pretty good job over there. But he has got to hold off his last remaining buildings here. These are the last couple of ones and he needs to save his base. But the problem is there's a warp prism here that continues to warp in reinforcements and these zealots at two, three upgrades are just ripping through the roaches in Hydras. And I think at the end of the day, Stardust is going to get the victory. This is the last couple buildings for Jadong. He has no way to save them. His swarm hosts are not anywhere nearby to defend. They are on the offensive. He has brought some of his swarm hosts back home. Will this be enough to save his last buildings? No, it is not. His extractor goes down and Stardust is victorious due to elimination. Jadong was defeated. And that is the first game of this best of five. Uh, very exciting start. So hopefully you guys stay tuned. Game two is just around the corner. And this is HD signing out.